This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. This video lecture is for the course ME273 Statics. We used the book Statics by R.C. Hibbler, 14th edition. Today I'm going over 4.1, Moment of a Force in Scalar Notation, uh, 4.2, Cross Products of Vectors, 4.3, Moment of a Force, Vector Formulation, and finally, Principle of Moments. After today, you will be able to understand and define a moment and determine moments in both uh, 2D and 3D cases. So first, we'll look at some applications. Uh, we'll look at moments in two dimensions, look at moments in three dimensions, and then do some problem solving. Now here we have this uh, beam, which is uh, supported on each end by a wall at A and B. We have to know what the effect of the force on the beam will have on the supports of the beam. Now carpenters often use hammers in this way to pull a stubborn nail. Through what sort of action does the force FH at the handle pull the nail? How do you mathematically model the effect of the force F at the point O? Well, we do it with moments and uh, that's the subject of today's lecture. Now, when a force is applied to a body, it will produce a tendency for the body to rotate about a point that is not on the line of the action of the force. Uh, this tendency to rotate sometimes is called a torque, uh, but most often it's called the moment of a force or just simply the moment. For example, look at this uh, wrench being used to unscrew the bolt. If a force is applied to the handle of the wrench, it will tend to turn the bolt about point O. The magnitude of the moment is directly proportional to the magnitude of F and the perpendicular distance or moment arm D. The larger the force, or the longer the moment arm, the greater the moment. Now note that if F is applied at some angle with respect to the wrench, uh, then it will be more difficult to turn the bolt since the moment arm is now d prime and since sine of theta is always less than 1 that means that the moment will be less than the force times d. Now if f is applied along the axis of the wrench the moment will be 0 since the line of action f the line of action of this force f intersects the point O and so as a result, the moment of F in this case is zero, and no turning can occur. Now we can generalize the above discussion to consider the force F and the point O, which lie in the shaded plane as shown here. The moment M sub O about the point O, or about an axis passing through the point O perpendicular to this page, is a vector quantity since it has a specified magnitude and direction. Now the magnitude is the magnitude of the force times the perpendicular distance between O and any line of action of force F. Now the direction of M sub O is uh, perpendicular to the plane that contains the force F and its moment arm D. The right hand rule is used to establish a sense of direction According to this rule, the natural curl of the fingers of the right hand as they are drawn towards the palm represents the rotation, or if no movement is possible, there is a tendency for rotation caused by the moment. As this action is performed, the thumb of the right hand will give the directional sense of the moment. Note that the moment vector is represented by three-dimensionally by a curl around an arrow. As you can see right here, we have the arrow showing the direction of the moment. Now remember, moment is a vector, just like force. And then they show this curl around that vector to give you the sense of the direction. Now in 2D, the moment vector is just represented by a uh, sort of like a curl, you know, a curved arrow, something like that, about the point about which it acts. Now for two-dimensional problems where all the forces lie within the xy plane as you see here, the resultant moment, m sub r, about the point O, 
can be determined by finding the algebraic sum of the moments caused by all the forces in the system. Now, as a convention, uh, we will generally consider positive uh, moments in the counterclockwise direction and negative moments in the uh, clockwise direction. Doing this, the directional sense of each moment can be represented by a plus or a minus sign. Using this sign convention with a symbolic curl to define the positive direction, uh, the resultant moment is uh, uh, just F1 times D1 plus F2 times D2 plus F3 times D3. Now sometimes in 2D it's easier to break up the force into uh, its Cartesian components. Um, that way you don't have to solve for this perpendicular distance D. So in, in this case the moment about O would be equal to so F sub X tends to rotate clockwise about O and it is a distance B from O so that would be a minus F sub X times D. I'm sorry, times B. Let's fix that. Times B. And then F sub Y also tends to want to rotate uh, clockwise about O. So it is also negative. So it would be minus F sub Y times A. Now, while finding the moment of a force in 2D is straightforward when you know the perpendicular distance D, finding the perpendicular distances can be hard, especially when working with forces in three dimension. So a more general approach to finding the moment of a force exists. This general approach is usually used when dealing with three dimensional forces, but can be used in the two dimensional case as well. This more general method of finding the moment of a force uses a vector operation called the cross product. Now the moment of a force will be formulated using Cartesian vectors uh, in the next section. So first we're going to expand our knowledge of vector algebra and uh, explore the cross product. Now the cross product between any two vectors a and b is written like this and it and it's reads c is equal to a cross b. Now the magnitude of C, this doesn't have a line over it, so it's a scalar. Is equal to A, B, sine of theta. And again, theta is between uh, 0 and 180. Now the direction of the vector C is perpendicular to the plane that contains both A and B. And it's used specifying the right hand rule. Now, if we know the direction of u sub c, that's a unit vector along um, that's perpendicular to the plane that contains a and b, we can write c as a vector is equal to a cross b, which is equal to a b sine of theta times that unit vector u sub c. Now let's talk about the laws of operation. The commutative law is not valid in this case, so A cross B is equal to negative B cross A. Now if the cross product is multiplied by a scalar, as you see here, these are all vectors by the way. Uh, this is equal to uh, that scalar times the vector A cross with B. Or you could do it the other way. It's the vector A crossed with the scalar times B. Or you can say A cross B times A. Now the distributed law of addition, uh, you have A cross uh, the sum of some vectors B plus D. So these are vectors here. Um, that's equal to A cross B uh, plus uh, A cross D. 
Now the best way to do cross product, and this is the way I do it in uh, this class and in dynamics, is to use the determinant. And it's quite, quite easy. Um, A cross B is equal to, and then you construct this matrix right here. And across the top row, you just put IJK, the unit vectors IJK. And then the second row is the Cartesian components of the vector A. And the last row is the Cartesian components of the vector B. Now, quick, um, when you want to do a determinant of a, of a um, matrix, hope this is review, it's just A times D minus B times C. So the way that we evaluate um, this particular determinant right here is breaking it up into three two by two determinants. And the way you do that is as you see here, you cross out the row and column that contains the vector i. Uh, we're, we're now calculating what is the i component of that cross product. Uh, and then you are left with this little four by four matrix right there. So you use the same rule that we did here and you multiply ay times bz minus az times by. And likewise for the uh, j unit vector, you cross out the row and column that contains that uh, j unit vector, and you're left with a sub x times b sub z minus a sub z times b sub x. You see that here. Now it's very important to remember the negative sign. When you do the j component, you have to include a minus sign in front of the unit vector j. And k is, is similar. Uh, we cross out the row and column. Uh, but this time it's positive, just like in the i case. So remember how to do this. This is very important. Now the moment of a force about point O, or actually about the moment axis passing through O, as you see here, is perpendicular to the plane containing O and F, and can be expressed in vector form by the moment about point O is equal to R cross F. And R is a vector, and F is a vector. Now R is a position vector. Uh, it's directed from the point O to a point on the line of action of A, and that's kind of important. I mean, R could also be like this, as long as it intersects the line of action of force F. F is like a sliding vector. And it can, you know, talk about the line of force. R could also be like that. Uh, and it gives you the same answer. Now, if you want to know what the magnitude of the cross product is, um, in this case, you know, we did this earlier, it'd be R times F, the magnitude of R times the magnitude of F times the sine of theta, where theta is measured between the tails of R and F. Now the direction and sense of the moment about O is determined by the right hand rule as it applies to the cross product here. Thus sliding R to the dashed position, as you see here, uh, and curling the right hand fingers from R towards F. The thumb is directed upwards or perpendicular to the plane containing R and F and this is in the same direction of, as the moment about the point O. Now we really don't need to worry about this too much, the magnitude and uh, direction of the moment, because we're going to be using cross products and from that uh, the magnitude and the moment are calculated together. The cross product operation is often used in three dimensions since the perpendicular distance or moment arm from point O to the line of action of the force is not needed. In other words, we can use any position vector R measured from point O to any point along the line of action. So you can see that here. Um, the moment about point O is equal to R1 cross F or R2 cross F or R3 cross F. It doesn't matter as long as it intersects the line of action of the force F. Now the Cartesian vector formulation of the cross product is shown here. Right, we have um, some force F and some, uh, mom some moment arm R, and those are two vectors. So um, we can expand this out using the determinant method, as we showed earlier. So remember, across the top row is IJK, across the first, second row is the 
Cartesian components of the position vector r and across the last row it is the Cartesian components of the vector f. So in this case the the moment would be equal to uh, ry times fc right we're going to cross out these two ry times fc minus rz times f Now remember the minus sign, when you do the J component, you have to put a minus sign. So it's minus Rx times Fc minus Rz times Fx. I'm just doing the determinant that we did earlier. So plus, now let's cross out the K, and we're left with that determinant. So it, it is Rx times F sub Y uh, minus Ry times F sub X. Now you don't have to remember this formula, right? I'm just doing an example here for you. So whenever we do a cross product, and it's going to come up a lot, um, use the determinant method to, to figure it out. Now, if a body is acted on by a system of forces, the resultant moment of the force is about 0, 0.0, can be determined by vector addition of the moment of each force. So this can be written as the moment, the resultant moment about the 0.0, 0 is equal to the sum of all the r cross f. This should be like i. And these are all vectors. So it's just the, you do the cross product for each one and then just add them together algebraically. So let's do some examples. First, we're given a 100 Newton force here and it's applied to this frame, which uh, looks like a big L. Find the moment about the point O. So this is a two-dimensional problem. I mean, we could construct, you know, the R vector from here to here, but let's do it in, uh, since a 2D case, let's do it uh, in, by resolving the 100 Newton force into forces along the XY axis and then determine the moment using a scalar analysis. So I'm going to call this force F, and we want to break it into its uh, X and Y components. So F sub X is equal to uh, that force, which is 100 Newtons, times 4 fifths. And that's equal to 80 Newtons. And it's uh, you know, this way, F sub X. Now F sub Y is pointing down. And F sub Y, oops, that's F, sub F. F sub Y is equal to uh, 100 times 3 fifths. And it's negative. So this is uh, minus 60. So now we had these two forces, Fx and Fy. So the moment about point O is going to be the Fy vector right here, and it tends to produce a moment like this, so it's negative. So let's write that over here. Um, that is F minus F sub Y times the perpendicular distance to F sub Y, which is 5 meters. And then the X component of the force also wants to rotate, you know, kind of, um, clockwise, so it's also negative, so it's minus F sub X times 2. So the moment about O is equal to um, minus 60 times 5 minus 80 times 2. So the moment about O is 460 Newton meters. And since it's negative, it is clockwise. Now note that I, you know, when I just plugged in F sub Y right here, I didn't plug in the minus 60. That would be double negative. Uh, just take this in 2D, just take the sense of the moment by imagining what FY does. Does it rotate clockwise or counterclockwise about the point O? And use that to assign the, the, uh, the sign. Here's a three-dimensional example. Uh, we're given the force F1 as a vector, Cartesian vector, and we're also given another force F2 as a Cartesian vector. We want to find the resultant moment by both those forces about the point O. Now we already have the vectors F1 and F2 as Cartesian vectors, 
So to do this problem, we're going to need the uh, position vector from the point O to the point A, since the both forces pass through A. So in this case, we can get by with one vector. So we can do this a couple of ways, but I think the best way first is to find the resultant force by adding our two vectors F1 plus F2. So that would be equal to uh, 100 minus 200 in the I uh, plus minus 120 plus 250 in the J plus 75 plus 100 in the K. And this comes out to be uh, minus 100 in the I plus 130 in the J plus 175 in the K. These are all vectors, and this is in pounds. So we need now to find the position vector R O sub A. So let's go back up and see if we can look at that. Um, we want the vector between O and A. So in the x direction, we need to go 4 feet, so it's 4i, it's positive. So that gets us to here. Now we need to go over to here, which is 5 feet, and that's also positive, so plus 5j. And then we need to go up to here, and that is uh, plus 3, so plus 3 in the k. So that's the unit vector, R, O, A. Remember, this means I'm on O, and I want to get to A. So 4, 5, 3. So 4i plus 5j. Uh, plus 3k and that is in feet so let's use the determinant method to find the cross product here so remember the first row is the ijk vectors the second row is the r vector the moment is r cross f so r is the second row so that would be 4 5 3 and the last row is the force vector f which is uh, minus minus 100 um, 130 and 175 so in the I direction you know we cross out I and J and I row and column we're left with uh, 5 times 175 uh, minus 3 times 130 and that's in the I direction In the j direction, you know, we cross out these two, and it's minus. Remember, we've got to put a minus sign on there. So it's minus 4 times uh, 175, minus 3 times minus 100. And that's in the j direction. And then the last one, you cross out these, and we're left with uh, plus 4 times 130, minus 5 times minus 100. And that's all in the k direction. And when you do all that algebra there, the moment about O is uh, 45 in the I minus 1,000 in J plus 1020 in the K. And that is in uh, foot pounds. Okay, let's do another problem. Here we have a 20 pound force that's applied to the hammer. We want to find the moment of the force at this point A. So again, since it's 2D, we're going to just resolve the 20 pound force into its components along the X and Y direction. And we'll determine the moment using the scalar analysis. So F sub Y is here, and F sub X is here. So F sub X is equal to the magnitude of the force times the cosine of 30, which is 17.32 pounds. F sub y is positive also, and it is 20 times the sine of 30, which is 10 pounds. So now we want to get the moment about point A. So that's F sub x first. 
uh, f sub x tends to want to rotate clockwise about a, so it's going to be negative. And its perpendicular distance is 18 inches, and its magnitude is 17.32. So 17.32 times 18. And f sub y, f sub y also wants to tend to rotate clockwise, so it's also negative. So it's minus uh, 10 times the perpendicular distance uh, between uh, this y-axis and a, which is 5 inches. This comes out to be minus 361.77 pound inch. So remember to round off your answers. So we want three significant figures. So we'd say 362 pound inch. And since it's negative, it's clockwise. Let's do one more problem. Uh, this will be a 3D problem. Uh, we're given a force here, F. And we're going to have to use the projection technique that we learned in Chapter 2 to resolve F into its Cartesian components. And then we'll need to get the vector between A and C. And once we have that, we can just do the cross product and determine the moment. So first we need to break uh, the force F into its Cartesian components. And we can see that uh, F is pointed 30 degrees uh, down from the XY plane, so F sub Z is uh, that force 80 times the sine of 30, or 40 newtons. Um, that's not a vector. That is a component. OK. Um, that's f sub z. Now, the f prime vector remembers this guy right here. And it is equal to 80 times cosine of 30. And then we want to break it up into its x and y components. Well, that f prime vector is 40 degrees from the positive y axis. So that means that f sub x is going to be equal to f prime, which is 80 cosine 30, uh, times the sine of 40. And this is equal to uh, 44.53 i. Well, not i. This is a scalar. And likewise, f sub y is equal to 80 cosine of 30 times the cosine of 40. And that's 53.07. And these are newtons. Now we need to get the vector from A to C. So R A C is equal to. Now, how far in the x direction do I need to go? Well, it looks like we need to go 300 plus 250. And I'm going to write this as meters. So um, R sub AC is equal to 0.55 in the I direction. Y direction, how far do we need to go out? Uh, looks like it's 400 millimeters or 0.4 meters. And it's positive. And then to get down to C, we need to drop down 200 millimeters. So it's negative minus 0.2 in the K. So let's set up our um, matrix. So the moment about A is equal to I, J, K. The next one is the R vector, so it's 0 0.55, 0 0.4, and minus 0.2. And lastly is the uh, Cartesian vector, F, and so that's 44.5, uh, 53.1, and minus 40. When you do that determinant, you get minus 5.39 in the I, plus 13.1 in the J, uh, plus 11.4 in the K. And that's in Newton meters. This concludes the lecture on 4.1, moment of a force, scalar notation. 4.2, cross product. 4.3, moment of a force, vector notation. And the principle of moments. The next video is 4.5, Moment About an Axis. See you in cyberspace.